Hello friends, welcome to anujindal.in. So in today's video, I am going to discuss with you the syllabus for Companies Act 2013 for your SEBI grade A examination 2021-22. Okay, so friends, the purpose of this video is to make you aware with the in-depth syllabus of Companies Act so that you can prepare on your own for SEBI grade A examination. Okay. So you can either Google the topics or you can refer the books. Okay. And also the enrolled students will benefit from this video as they will get an insight as to what all is covered in our course. Okay. So let us discuss the syllabus of Companies Act. So this is the syllabus which was given in the last year notification. So the last year notification of SEBI grade examination, it stated uh, Companies Act 2013 with specific reference to so particular chapters were mentioned in the syllabus chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 8, 10, 11, 12 and 27 okay so these are the important chapters or you can say uh, which you have to study okay so you have to study all the amendments also related to these chapters okay the latest amendments okay which you can easily get from the website of Companies Act from the website of Ministry of Corporate Affairs, okay, MCA. So let us discuss these chapters one by one as to what all you need to study, okay. So, so uh, first of all, chapter 3, Prospectus and Allotment of Securities. First of all, what is the meaning of prospectus? So basically, prospectus is a document through which the company invites the people to subscribe to the shares then difference between public company offer and private company offer so what are the different modes available for a public company and a private company okay then what is a public offer so in public offer you have an uh, initial public offer which is ipo and fpo further public offer okay then private placement what is the meaning of private placement what is the limit maximum limit on the people to whom shares can be given on private placement okay and there are certain certain conditions which has to be fulfilled by a company for private placement then the power of SEBI to regulate issue and transfer so the issue and transfer of securities is regulated by SEBI okay then what is a deemed prospectus okay very very important meaning of deemed prospectus then what all needs to be stated by a company in the prospectus so what are the contents of a prospectus which are need to be specified then variation in terms of contract referred to in prospectus so if there is a variation then what is the penalty for the company then offer of sale by members okay so if the existing members or the existing shareholders want to sell their shares then what is the condition then dematerialization of securities so now whenever a company wants to issue shares then they have to be in a dematerialized form then advertisement of prospectus okay then moving on next is difference between shelf prospectus red herring prospectus and average prospectus so you should be clear with the concepts okay so what is the meaning of shelf prospectus so shelf prospectus is for multiple issue of securities using a single prospectus then there is a red herring prospectus so red he herring prospectus is connected with the book building method okay book building method okay then abridged prospectus is that prospectus uh, which is issued with the application form so this prospectus is given along with the application form okay then liability for untrue statement in prospectus so if there is any false or untrue statement in the prospectus then what is the liability so there are two types of liability civil liability liability and criminal liability okay then remedies for misrepresentation is in prospectus so if there is a misrepresentation in prospectus then what are the remedies so whether the uh, subscribers will get compensation or whether they can cancel the contract okay all those things then punishment for fraudulently inducing to invest money so if uh, there is a fraud or there is an in intention to fraud and uh, people are induced or encouraged to invest money fraudulently then what is the punishment then action by affected person so those persons which are affected by this fraud what action can they take then prohibition of personation for acquisition so if a person uh, uh, disguise himself as somebody else 
to acquire shares then what is the penalty or what are the punishment okay then allotment of securities by company so what are the conditions of allotment this is also very very important that what is the minimum application money which has to be received okay and uh, what is the minimum subscription which has to be there to allot the security okay and in case the company does not receive the minimum application money or the minimum subscription then what is the procedure for refund of money okay all those things then next is securities to be dealt with in stock exchanges okay so the securities have to be dealt on the stock exchanges any recognized stock exchange then gdr global depository receipt and what is the condition so whether any whether the ordinary resolution has to be passed or whether special resolution has to be passed so all the conditions then next is chapter 4 share capital and debentures this chapter is also very very important and a bit lengthy also so first of all kinds of share capital so there are two types of share capital equity and preference share capital so you should know the difference between the two and their important features then nature of shares or debentures so what is the nature of shares so share gives ownership in the company whereas debenture is so, uh, debenture is a debt so debenture holders they are creditors of the company so shareholders are owners and debenture holders are creditors of the company then numbering of shares so shares are numbered okay then certificate of shares so sh uh, share certificate is issued but now in case of dematerialized securities so in the case of dematerialized securities certificate is not issued okay then voting rights what are the voting rights which are given to equity shareholders and preference shareholders okay then variation of shareholders rights so if the company wants to uh, make some variation in the shares of a class then what are the condition then call on shares of same class to be made on uniform basis and after that company to accept unpaid share capital although not called up so if a company has not called up the money but still it can accept the unpaid share capital from the shareholders okay then after that payment of dividend in proportion to amount paid up so dividend is paid in proportion to the amount paid up on the shares okay then application of premiums received on issue of shares so if the shares are issued on premium then for what purposes that premium can be utilized so the money goes into the securities premium reserve okay so or the securities premium account so for what purposes that money can be utilized okay then prohibition on issue of shares at discount so shares cannot be issued at discount okay but there is one exception sweat equity shares sweat equity shares they can be issued at discount now what are sweat equity shares these are those shares which are issued to the employees of the company okay then issue and redemption of preference shares so what are the conditions for issue what are the conditions for redemption okay and there are some exceptions also so what are those exceptions so generally uh, ir irredeemable preference shares cannot be issued okay irredeemable preference shares they cannot be issued and the maximum uh, time limit for redeemable debentures for redeemable preference shares is 20 years but there is some exception okay that you have to study then issue of right shares what are right shares okay so right shares are those shares which are issued to the existing shareholders then transfer and transmission of securities and punishment for personation of shareholder then after that refusal of registration and appeal against refusal so if there is a refusal to register re register the transfer so uh, the, the appeal can be made against such refusal okay then rectification of register of members so if there is any mistake in the register of members then rectification how the rectification is made and what types of rest, uh, rectification are made then power of limited company to alter its share capital so a limited company can increase its share capital by changing the memorandum of association okay or it can change the face value of the shares also then issue of bonus shares so bonus shares are those shares which are issued to existing shareholders free of cost so they are issued free of cost okay and what are the conditions of bonus shares these these are very very important then notice to be given to registrar for alteration of share capital so registrar has to be intimated when there is a alteration of share capital 
then unlimited company to provide for sh reserve share capital on conversion into limited company so if an unlimited company converts into a limited company then there is a creation of reserve share capital okay then reduction of share capital again there is a condition when the when can the company reduce the share capital so the approval of the creditors is required in this case okay then after that restrictions on purchase by company or giving of loans by it for purchase of its share so there is a restriction company cannot give loan to anybody to purchase the shares of the company okay then buyback buyback means repurchase of the securities by the company so if a company purchases its own securities then it is called buyback so what are the conditions of buyback and there are some conditions in which buyback is not allowed so what are those cases in which buyback is not allowed then transfer of certain sums to crr crr means capital redemption reserve account so capital redemption reserve account so this capital redemption reserve account this can be used only for issuing fully paid up bonus shares okay then debentures okay what are the conditions there are different conditions for issue of debentures so you should know those conditions and there are different terms also like debenture redemption reserve okay then there are debenture trustees so different different terms are there which are related with the term debentures then there are secure debentures okay so all those terms you have to study they are given in the act only then power to nominate so you can uh, so the shareholder or the debenture holder can nominate someone so that in case they die then the shares or the debentures will go to that will go to that nominee okay now moving on to the next chapter chapter 8 it is regarding declaration and payment of dividend okay so first of all declaration of dividend now dividend are of two type interim dividend and final dividend so the difference between the two is important okay then if the company declares the dividend and but does not pay the dividend on time then it goes to the unpaid dividend account okay this is also important unpaid dividend account then there is a investor education and protection fund so uh, uh, in this investor education and protection fund you have to study that what are the sources of this fund what money comes into this fund okay and what are the application of this fund so there are two things sources and application of this fund okay then right to dividend share right shares and bonus shares to be held in abeyance pending registration of transfer of shares okay then punishment for failure to distribute dividend so if a company fails to distribute dividends then what is the punishment for the company and what is the punishment for the directors okay then exceptions in case of failure to pay dividend okay so exceptions are very very important in this whole Com companies act okay now after that next is chapter 10 audit and auditors okay so first of all what is a statutory audit statutory audit is also called financial audit and what is the need of financial audit then appointment of auditors appointment and reappointment of auditors so now you have to make a classification between a government company and a non government company okay because the procedure of appointing auditors is different for a government company and it is different for a non government company okay and what is the so in this you have to uh, study what are the term of auditors okay who can be who can become auditor okay then casual vacancy okay if there is a vacancy in the post of auditor then removal resignation and giving of special notice so how an auditor can be removed okay what is the procedure then if an auditor wants to resign so how much notice he has to give okay then eligibility qualification and disqualifications of auditors very very important so who can become an auditor okay whether a degree of chartered accountancy is required or not then remuneration what is the remuneration given to auditors how it is decided what are the components of remuneration then powers and duties of auditors and auditing standards so auditors have certain powers they can ask for certain documents so they have that power then next is auditor not to render certain services so certain ser services like bookkeeping actuarial services investment banking they cannot be given by the auditor okay because it can lead to conflict of interest 
then auditor to sign audit reports so auditors sign the audit reports and they give their remarks or comments okay on that report very very important then auditors to attend general meetings so auditors either they can attend the meeting personally or they can attend through their representative then punishment for contravention so if the company if the director do not comply with the provisions of this chapter 10 or if the auditor does not comply with the provisions then what is the punishment okay then central government to specify audit of items of cost in respect of certain companies so this is regarding cost audit okay now moving on next is chapter 11 appointment and qualification of directors so first of all company to have a board of directors so composition of board of directors so composition what is the composition of board of directors what is the minimum number of directors what is the maximum number of directors so this is different for private company this is different for public company and this is different for one person company then what is independent director what is the meaning of independent director what is the term of independent director and how is their remuneration determined okay then manner of selection of independent directors and maintenance of data bank of independent directors so there is a data bank of independent directors from where they are appointed then small shareholders director what is the meaning of small shareholder and what is the meaning of small shareholder director then uh, what is the meaning of woman director and which companies are required to appoint women director okay then appointment and retirement of directors this is also very very important what is the procedure for appointment of directors what is the procedure of retirement of directors so the directors generally they retire by rotation okay then director identification number din this is very very important so first of all application for allotment of din is given then there is allotment then prohibition to obtain more than one DIN. So one director can have only one director identification number. Then director has to intimate the director identification number to the company in which he is a director. Then company has to inform the DIN to the registrar and obligation to indicate DIN on the returns or any information or any circulars. Okay. Then next is right of persons other than retiring directors to stand for directorship then what is additional director what is alternate director what is a nominee direct director so the difference between these three terms okay then appointment of directors to be voted individually so there should be one resolution for one appointment so you cannot make multiple appointments with a single resolution okay then option to adopt principle of proportional representation for appointment of directors so in this you should know what is the meaning of proportional representation what is the meaning of cumulative voting okay and what is the meaning of single transferable vote these three terms are very very important mcq can be asked on this then disqualifications for appointment of director okay so who cannot become a director so if a person is of unsound mind then he cannot become director okay or if a person has been adjudged insolvent then he cannot become a director okay and similarly other conditions are also given then moving on number of director chiefs so what is the maximum number of companies in which a person can become a director then duties of director very very important so basically a director has to promote the objectives of the company this is the primary responsibility of a director and there are other duties as well then vacation of office of director so if the office of director becomes empty or if it is vac vacated okay then resignation of director how so how many periods of notice is required to be given by the director then removal of directors what is the procedure to remove a director okay or in which cases a director can be removed then register of directors and key managerial personnel KMP stands for key managerial personnel so register of directors and key managerial personnel has to be maintained by every company and company has also uh, also required to maintain that what is their shareholding in the company okay then members right to inspect members mean shareholders so shareholders have a right to inspect the register of directors and key managerial person and finally what is the punishment if the provisions of this chapter are not followed okay the next is chapter 12 meeting of boards and the powers of the board okay 
so first of all meetings of boards so how many meetings are required to be held of board of directors in a financial year okay and what should be the gap between two meetings then meaning of one person company meaning of small company and meaning of dormant company then quorum for meeting of board quorum means minimum number of directors so what is the minimum number of directors which are required for a meeting to be held okay then passing of resolution by circulation okay defects in appointment of directors not to invalidate actions taken then audit committee what is the meaning of audit committee what is the composition composition means how many minimum directors are required in an audit committee then what are the responsibilities of audit committee then next is nomination and remuneration committee so again what is the composition of this committee what are the responsibilities and duties and what are the elements which have to be considered while framing remuneration policy so basically this committee has the job of uh, suggesting nominations that who can become a director and also suggesting the remuneration so for framing a remuneration policy different factors are considered like uh, the remuneration can be divided into a fixed element and a variable element and this variable element can depend upon the performance okay also sufficient remuneration has to be given to the directors otherwise they will not become director of the company okay so these are some of the elements which need to be considered then next is stakeholders relationship committee so again very very important uh, the composition the chairman who can be the chairman then powers of board what, what are the powers of board of directors okay and there are some restrictions on the powers okay so, so there are some decisions which can be taken by the board by passing a resolution in the board meeting but there are certain uh, actions which can be taken only after the resolution has been passed in the general meeting okay then company to contribute to bona fide and charitable funds okay so company can contribute to charitable funds then prohibition and restriction regarding political contribution so every company cannot make political political contribution there are some condition given that which company can go for political contribution and then it has to be disclosed in the balance sheet and profit and loss and there there was some amendment in the finance act 2017 regarding this political contribution then power of board and other persons to make contributions to national defense fund okay so contribution to national defense fund can be made and disclosure of interest by director so if a director has any interest in any contract or in any company then it has to be disclosed by the director and that director cannot participate in that particular meeting okay then next is loan to directors so generally loan to directors cannot be given by the company but there are certain exceptions then loan and investment by the company then investments of the company to be held in its own name but again there are certain exceptions in which case the investment can be held in some other name also then related party transaction what is the meaning of related party trans transaction okay then what type of approvals are required for related party transaction then there is vigil mechanism what is the meaning of vigil mechanism very very important then register of contracts or arrangements in which directors are in interested so a, a register has to be maintained in which the contracts or arrangements are specified in which directors are interested or they have a stake then contract of employment with managing or whole time directors then moving on payment to director for loss of office in connection with transfer of undertaking or property or shares so if the there is a transfer of the company or the assets of the company are transferred to somebody else okay then what is the compensation paid to director then restriction on non cash transactions involving directors so non cash transactions what are the restrictions on non cash transactions then contract by one person company opc so the contract by one person company with its only member so there is a single member of one person company who is also the director then prohibition on forward dealings in securities of the company by director or key managerial personnel so what are the restrictions or what is the prohibition then prohibition on insider trading so for that you first need to study what is the meaning of insider trading so insider trading is basically concerned with trading or dealing in the securities of the company on the basis of some non public 
नॉन पब्लिक प्राइस सेंसिटिव इंफॉर्मेशन ओके एंड प्राइस सेंसिटिव इंफॉर्मेशन मीन्स दैट इंफॉर्मेशन विच कैन अफेक्ट द शेयर प्राइस ऑफ द कंपनी इफ दैट इंफॉर्मेशन बिकम्स पब्लिक ओके then what is the penalty for insider trading so if anyone indulges into insider trading then what is the penalty okay then finally we have to study chapter 27 national company law tribunal and national company law appellate tribunal okay so first of all constitution of national company law tribunal so there is a president okay then there are technical members and there are judicial members so members there are two types of members in nclt technical members and judicial members okay this is important then qualification of president and members so what is the eligibility or what is the qualification for the president for judicial members and for technical members then similarly constitution of nclt so in nclt you have a chairperson and then you have technical member and judicial members so what are their qualifications then selection of members of tribunal and appellate tribunal so what is the procedure of selection of members of tribunal and appellate tribunal okay so who will appoint like whether it, it is chief justice of india or whether it is central government okay so who will appoint the president who will appoint the chairperson all those things then term of office so what is the tenure what is the tenure of president chairperson Uh, members okay and what is the maximum age limit what is the maximum age limit of president chairperson and members then acting president and acting chairperson so when there is a vacancy in the office of president or chairperson so the senior most member becomes the acting president or the acting chairperson then resignation and removal of the president members or the chairperson what is the procedure okay then benches of tribunal and appellate tribunal so the principal bench sits at the new delhi but there can be other benches also as specified by the government then orders of tribunal or nfra national financial reporting authority so the order the tribunal can pass orders okay and if the person is not satisfied with the order of the tribunal then he can file an appeal before the Na national company law appellate tribunal okay so appeal from orders appeal can be filed before nclat okay appeal can be filed before nclat then moving on so the appeals have to be disposed of by nclat and nclat in a quick manner so they should not make undue delay in solving the cases okay there should be quick disposal of the appeals then if a person is not satisfied with the uh, order of nclat then he can file an appeal before the supreme court okay so there is a, there is a time limit also within which the appeal has to be filed before the supreme court then procedure before nclat and nclat then delegation of powers so powers can be delegated to the other officers by the nclat and nclat then president members officers they are deemed to be the public servants as per the indian penal code then protection of action taken in good faith so if the president members or the officers takes any action in good faith then they are not liable to any penalty or they are not liable to any action okay then power to seek assistance from chief metropolitan magistrate then civil court does not have any jurisdiction okay so civil court cannot interfere in the cases which are before nclt and nclat then right to legal representation very very important that a person has a right to legally re be represented by any ca or by any cs or by any legal practitioner okay and finally finally limitation so the law of limitation 1963 applies okay law of limitation 1963 applies so i hope friends you must have liked this video as i have tried to cover the syllabus of companies act 2013 in as much detail as possible also you have to study the amendments amendments are very very important and majority of the amendments are related to the penalties only okay so friends i will be coming up with more such videos in future so if you like this video then do subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to get benefit of more such videos 
ऑल द वेरी बेस्ट हैव अ नाइस डे